All aboard for the sunny side. It doesn't matter what game we play, Grandpa always makes it lots of fun. And we thought we were going to have fun all day. Until guess who turned up? Floyd. Floyd lives in the house opposite. And he goes to my school. He loves boasting. Look at my new watch! I'm gonna get you! He loves playing jokes. I'm coming! Boo! 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 And he always wants everything his own way. I <laughs> got you! Grandpa agrees with me. Jason! Yeah, what? Check out my new skateboard. Floyd is a big, spoiled <laughs> show off. <laughs> And the thing he was showing off about today was this. What do you think of my brand new bike, eh? Is it cool or is it cool? Pretty cool. Pretty cool? Don't you mean it's totally unbelievably cool? Aw, oh, been playing choo-choo trains with your grandpa, have you? Let's have a look. <laughs> this is so babyish. I grew out of trains years ago. Floyd is always breaking my toys. I didn't want him playing here. I needed to get him out of the house. I had an idea. Mum, please can you take us out on our bikes? Yes, we were going to spend the day taking Floyd for a ride. Well, if you're going for a bike ride, I'm going to have a little lie down. I knew what Grandpa was thinking. Hello, Floyd. I don't trust that Floyd one bit. I'm coming too. Not the shrinking cap, Grandpa. It was the most expensive bike in the whole shop. It's got 57 gears. <laughs> I don't think a bike can have 57 gears. Mine does. What was that? Something's wrong. Oh, the chain's come off. Oh, dear. Can't you mend it? Hmm. Better wait until Jason's dad gets back. He'll fix it for you. I don't want to wait. I want to go on a bike ride now. Okay. We've got a spare bike you can borrow. I'll go and dig it out. So Mum went off to the garage and soon she came back with this. You have got to be joking. Well, there's nothing wrong with it. It's perfectly safe. Go on, give it a try. I can't ride this. This is a girl's bike. It's useless. Before I could stop him, he was making for the train. My God, he's on the train! Ah! Oh, help! I've broken my leg. Ah! Oh, and it's all your fault, Jason. You and your stupid choo-choo train. It's all right. I don't think it's broken. Oh, Mum helped Floyd to his feet and took him inside. Oh. He was making a whooping great fuss. Ow! Oh, my leg! Have a jammy jumbly. It'll take your mind off the pain. Mum was so busy being kind to Floyd, and Floyd was so busy being rude to Mum, that neither of them saw Grandpa running in. He hid behind the sofa. Jason, would you fetch Floyd a drink? Yes, I'll get one too. <laughs> oh no, are you cold? <sighs> Must be the shock. I'll fetch you a blanket. I was in the kitchen and Mum was upstairs, so Floyd was on his own. At least, he thought he was on his own. He leapt off the sofa and grabbed another jammy jumbly. I knew it. Grandpa was right. Floyd really hadn't hurt himself at all. You love that train, don't you? I can't see why. It doesn't do anything. It's useless. <sighs> Grandpa wants me to put him in my pocket and take him upstairs. He needed to talk to me. some comics. Oh, okay. Grandpa ran out of my bedroom and slid down the banisters. I went down the safer way and I gave Floyd the Captain Dumbletwick comics. What took you so long? Here we are. I made you some sandwiches, Floyd. A sandwich might get you up and about. 
Oh, and I'll bring you some fruit too. Now I needed to get out of the way so Grandpa could catch Floyd out. Shall we play the Captain Donald's with board game? I ran upstairs to fetch the game. And now it was time for Grandpa to put his plan into action. Grandpa was jiggling Jemima's rag doll about. <clears throat> Floyd, don't try and get up. What is it you want? That doll! You want the doll? No! I mean, it was dancing! You don't feel feverish. I think I'd better take your temperature all the same. So Mum rushed upstairs to find a thermometer, and I rushed downstairs with the Captain Dumbletwit game. Mum still hadn't caught Floyd out. Grandpa was going to have to try again. Just going to wash my hands. Hurry up! I had to get out of the way. You know how Grandpa can use his magic to make my toys go? Well, now he was in our Sunny Sands train. Floyd couldn't believe his eyes. He was about to get up and follow it when... I knew I had one somewhere. Open wide and close. The crane, it moves, it moves. Shh, keep it shut tight. I've got another idea, but you're going to have to get Mum out of the way again. OK, leave it to me. I went back into the sitting room, and so did Grandpa. Temperature's normal. Jason? Is that train remote control? No. Then how come it was going all around the room by itself? There was smoke coming out and everything. Maybe I should call the doctor. No! Maybe we should try and fix Floyd's bike. That might make him feel better. Yes, it would. OK. We'll give it a try. We won't be long. You can read the Captain Donald's comics while you're waiting. And you can finish your sandwiches. So off we went into the garden. Now it was up to Grandpa. Floyd reached forward and moved towards the sandwiches. Little did he know that Grandpa was about to give him the surprise of his life. Ah! Oh, First Floyd chased the sandwich. Then the sandwich chased Floyd. All around the room and into the kitchen. Oh, please! I don't know! into the garden. Help! 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 <laughs> Help! Floyd, you're running. You weren't pretending to be hurt, were you? No. OK, yes, I was. I'm sorry. I know I shouldn't have. I just didn't want to ride that tatty old bike. I see. And what made you stop pretending? I was chased by a sandwich. Chased by a sandwich. <laughs> oh, Floyd, you're pretending again. That's very funny. Chased by a sandwich. Please, can we go on that bike right now? I don't care which bike it is. Just get me out of here. I picked up Grandpa while Mum was putting Floyd's helmet on and took him into the sitting room. We were just about to start practicing again when this time... The doorbell rang. And guess who marched right in? Floyd. Floyd lives in the house opposite. And he goes to my school. He loves boasting. Look at my new watch! Boo! 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 He loves playing jokes. And he always wants everything his own way. OK, you can be the goalie. Miss Smiley says you're doing a Captain Dumbletwit play. She says I could be in it. I'm going to be Diabolical Dave. <laughs> right, let's get some costumes. Uh, but Floyd, Floyd Grandpa So that was that. Diabolical Floyd was Diabolical Dave, and poor Grandpa didn't have a part in the play. Come on, hurry up. Chop, chop. Come on. Oh, you're here too, Floyd. Grandpa gone for a little lie down, has he? I think you better practice in the garden. Don't want to disturb him. Let's get into our costumes and start practicing. If you do it my way, you'll be fine. I wasn't at all sure it would be fine. Come on! 
Then, Grandpa jumped down and followed us into the garden. Right, so, you could so before long, we were practising the play. Grandpa could see that Floyd was spoiling our fun and he didn't like it. And we know who's behind this thingy, Captain Dumbletwit. Oh, we know who's behind it, do we? <laughs> Your doojit voice is pathetic. Mm. I knew Grandpa would be cross with Floyd, but before he could do anything about it, Mum came into the garden. Time to go. So we all got into Campo and off we went to Miss Smiley's cafe. And Floyd said, if you just do it my way, it'll be fine. I really needed Grandpa. I was sure he'd find his own way there. And I was right. At the cafe, we were set for the final practice. Floyd was getting crosser and crosser. And just then, I saw Grandpa arrive. to the kitchen. The good news was that Floyd had run off. Grandpa couldn't resist being in the play too, playing the part of Dugit. We know who must be behind this villainy, Captain Dumbletwit. How's Jason doing that Dugit voice? He's not even moving his lips. <laughs> Captain Dumbletwit off to save the universe! I wish I was in the play. I'm sure it's not too late for you to join in. Captain Dumbletwit grabbed the super silencer and put us into reverse. Thank you, Captain Dumbletwit. The music's come back and I can sing. La 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 la. Harry, let's all sing. Diabolical Dave, that's me! I'm dreadful and I'm dastardly. Look at me and you will see the baddest baddie in history. Bringing misery to outer space. Sometimes he might fumble it. Let's always get there in the end. So thanks to Captain Dumbletwit, our friend, our friend. Look, I'm sorry I wanted it all my way. It was actually good fun your way. Thanks for letting me join in. That's okay, Floyd. I still think I would have made a better diabolical Dave. He 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 he. And with Bubbles and Squeak, of course there wouldn't be a problem. But just then, I came round the back. A problem turns up. Floyd. Floyd lives in the house opposite, and he goes to my school. He loves boasting. Look at my new watch! He loves playing <laughs> jokes. Come in. Boo! 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 And he always wants everything his own way. Grandpa agrees with me. Floyd is a big, spoiled show-off. Check out my new skateboard. What is that? It's squeak. <laughs> Kittens are stupid pets. Squeak is not a stupid pet. He's a wild and scary cat. And he's going to be part of our wild and scary animal park. 
Nice one, Grandpa. <gasps> Actually, I've got loads of wild and scary pets. You need to see them. Wait right there. Floyd, we really don't need to see anything wild and scary. Back in your basket, Squee. I'm back. Want to see my rat? Do I want to see your rat? Uh, no thanks. Oh, uh, go on. No, I really, really, really don't want to see your rat. Just a peep. Whoa! That was only a toy rat. Gotcha, gotcha! <laughs> but it still made Bubbles jump, and Grandpa was cross. Come in the garden! One of my other wild pets is out there. Too wild to bring inside. Come on! He's only playing tricks, Bubbles. Yes, but you know me. I'm not very good at tricks. Oh. Tricks, eh? Well, we'll see about tricks. He's in this plant. Tipped over very quietly because he's asleep. And if you wake him up, he gets really, really wild. Bubbles knew that Floyd was just going to play a trick with some kind of fake pet, but she was still really nervous. At that moment, Grandpa ran out of the kitchen and hid. Are you there, Simon? Simon? Simon. Yeah, he's my um, snake. Oh! Oh! Of course, Bubbles knew that Simon was a plastic snake, but she hated being chased. Oh, I hate being chased! Oh! Oh! Stop it, Floyd, she hates being chased! Then, Grandpa came out of his hiding place and got up onto the table. Don't tell anyone I'm here, Squeak. I'm going to hide round the back. Chasing you, Bubbles. Is it? Oh, good. You'd hate to be chased like that. <laughs> Chasing doesn't bother me. Nothing bothers me. Come on, Bubbles. Let's go and get a drink. <laughs> Floyd went up to squeak, and Grandpa got ready to put his plan into action. Well, hi there, Wildcat. You're really scary, aren't you? Ha! Floyd turned his back on Squeak again, but this time Grandpa went... Meow! Was that you yowling? Trying to make me jump, are you? Ha! No chance. Grandpa's first plan hadn't worked, so he jumped off the table and ran towards the pond. He saw the shell and that gave him an idea. Floyd? There's nothing the matter with me, but there's something the matter with your kitten. It yowled at me! Yow! Bubbles and Jemima dashed outside to see if Squeak was okay. And of course, Squeak was fine. Oh, he's fine. <laughs> but I think he might be better off inside. With Bubbles and Jemima out of the way, Floyd suddenly spotted the big shell. Hey, cool shell! I could pretend there's a wild animal in that! <gasps> there actually is a wild animal in it! Brilliant! Hey, Bubbles! Oh, I see. You're trying to scare me now, are you? Nothing scares me. And that was the moment I arrived home with Dad and Beowulf. Floyd, fancy seeing you here. Are you okay? Yes, but guess what? There's a wild animal in that shell. I'm going to get Bubbles. One of his jokes, I suppose. Come on, Wolfie. I knew that this was probably not one of Floyd's jokes. Come and see! There really is a wild animal in that shell! While Floyd was trying to persuade Bubbles and Jemima to come outside, I ran into the sitting room. No more jokes, Floyd! It's not a joke! I got Grandpa what he needed and ran back into the garden. Come on, there's a wild animal outside! Come on! Floyd, come here! Quick, come quick! I'll be back. I saw something move in the pond! What? It's probably our shark. Your shark? He's very small, but he's very fierce. <gasps> <laughs> 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 
Grandpa's plan was working. He was underwater, making my plastic shark move. Just when Floyd was really close, Grandpa made this happen. <laughs> While Floyd ran inside, I fished Grandpa out of the pond as quickly as I could. I'm so sorry I tried to scare you. I was only joking. But now I know what it feels like now that that shark made me jump out of my skin. Hey! So Jason played a trick on you for once, eh, Floyd? I guess so. But I won't play another joke again, I promise. It's okay, Floyd. I shouldn't let your jokes bother me. They are only jokes after all. Yeah. Wanna see my spider? Oh, um, uh, yes. While everyone was laughing at Bubbles, stroking a plastic spider... So brave. <laughs> I took Grandpa in my pocket to the sitting room. Miss Smiley's Strawberry Surprise. But just as we were about to leave the house, the doorbell rang. Mum went to answer it, and guess who marched in? Floyd. I'm going to Miss Smiley's fun kitchen, and I need a lift. I knew what Grandpa was thinking, because I was thinking it too. Not Floyd. Floyd lives in the house opposite, and he goes to my school. He loves boasting. Look at my new watch! He loves playing jokes. I'm coming! Boo! 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 And he always wants everything his own way. Grandpa agrees with me. Floyd is a big, spoiled show off. Check out my new skateboard. Come on then, let's go! Will you be alright while I'm gone, Grandpa? Oh yes, I think I'll just have a little lie down. Floyd cooking at Miss Smiley's Fun Kitchen is a recipe for disaster. There's only one thing for it, I'm coming too. Not the shrinking cap, Grandpa! Oh. Quick, Grandpa, jump into my backpack. But he was too late. Just at that moment, Floyd came back in. Are you coming or not? But, Floyd, I mean, no, no, I need him. Mum dropped us off at the cafe, and lots of our friends were already there. Has everyone got their aprons on? Good. Don't you spoiling your lovely clothes. No, come closer. I'm not wearing an apron. Now, today we're going to be making two of my favourite dishes. Suck up spaghetti and my very own strawberry surprise. <laughs> now, you're going to make your very own. But because it's a bit messy, we're going to make it in the kitchen. So, we all ran into the kitchen. <laughs> no need to run! Floyd came stomping after us in a sulky mood. Then, Grandpa jumped off the dresser and ran to Miss Smiley's table. While we were all in the kitchen, Floyd crept back into the cafe. He was up to his usual tricks. The bad news was that Floyd had plans for the spaghetti. The good news was that Grandpa had plans for Floyd. While Floyd wasn't looking, he climbed into the cold spaghetti. Floyd went over to the bowl and picked it up. And this is what happened next. The spaghetti started to wriggle. Worms! Wriggly worms! I had a pretty good idea that it wasn't wriggly worms. It was a wriggly Grandpa. And I was right. Floyd? What's going on? There are wriggly worms in the spaghetti! Wriggly worms? There can't be! <laughs> what were you doing with the spaghetti in the first place? Nothing! I didn't touch it! It was wriggling so much it just fell off the table by itself! Really? Well, you can at least clear up this mess! I couldn't let Floyd see Grandpa! It's alright, I'll do it Miss Smiley! Oh, thank you, Jason. That's very kind. Floyd, in the kitchen, please. Teacher's pet. Oh, Floyd! I was hoping that Grandpa was all right after his fall. Soon, we'd finish making our suck-up spaghetti. Lovely, 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 lovely! But Floyd's wasn't lovely. Now, we're going to make pudding. 
my very own strawberry surprise. And all you need are some strawberries, some cake, some custard, strawberry jam, sugar, cream, and some slices of fruit for decoration. And this is what you do. Soon everybody was busy making the strawberry surprise. Everybody, that is, except Floyd. All he wanted to do was cause trouble. Oh. <sighs> Who did that? It wasn't me. Floyd! It wasn't me, Miss Smiley, honest! Miss Smiley was looking less and less smiley by the second. Oh, this is supposed to be my fun kitchen. It's not much fun for anyone right now. Oh, Miss Smiley went to clean off the custard and Floyd started messing with Zack's strawberry surprise. I knew Grandpa would be really cross with Floyd now and I was right. I've had enough of this. Floyd has got to be stopped. This is what we'll do. Soon, everybody had finished making their strawberry surprises. Oh, you've all done brilliantly. But Floyd hadn't done brilliantly. Now, all we have to do is the washing up. Right. Come on, Floyd, you too. It was time to put Grandpa's plan into action. I rearranged the fruit slices to make a cross face on Miss Smiley's strawberry surprise. Perfect, Jason. Now you leave me to it. Grandpa knew Floyd would try to get out of the washing up. And sure enough, he sneaked back into the cafe. <laughs> Grandpa was ready for him. First, Grandpa knocked over the cups and bowls. Hey, what was that? Then, Grandpa ran behind the jar and started wobbling it about. Oh, I don't like this. Miss Smiley! Young man, I want to have a word with you. Who said that? Me, Sydney, the strawberry surprise. This time, Grandpa had gone too far. He was pretending to be a talking pudding. I've had enough of you spoiling everybody's fun. It wasn't me, it was Jason. Don't give me any of that rubbish. I saw you. It's got to stop. Yeah. Okay. I can't believe I'm talking to a strawberry surprise. Miss Smiley, come here quick. What's the matter, Floyd? Did you know your strawberry surprise can talk? Oh, please, Floyd, no more tricks. It's not a trick. His name's Sydney. Look, his face is all cross. You must have done that, Floyd. No way, it wasn't me. Come on, Sydney, say something. But Sydney had said all he had to say. Now it was time for Floyd to own up. I really don't think I can take much more of this. OK. I did do all the other stuff, like dropping the spaghetti and flicking the custard. I know I shouldn't have. I won't do anything else. Promise. I'm really sorry. Thank you for apologising. But it's true about Sydney. Miss Smiley started to smile again. And her smile was bigger and better than ever. So off we went in Campo to Mr Whoops's toy shop. And Mum said, are you the only two children going? And I said, I think so. When we arrived, guess who was there too? <laughs> Floyd. <sighs> Floyd lives in the house opposite and he goes to my school. He loves boasting. Look at my new watch. I'm going to get you. He loves playing <laughs> jokes. I'm coming. Boom. And he always wants everything his own way. OK, you can be the goalie. 
So it won't surprise you to know that Floyd wanted his own way about the toy of the week. This one, I'm sure. <laughs> I want to see that jigsaw. No, that jigsaw. No, the castle. The castle. No, the face paint. Oh, 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 oh. Mr. Whoops had one of his little accidents. So we all started looking for the toy of the week. Hey, Jason, what about this? Jemima had found a puppet. This looks good too. What have you got there? Puppets? Let me have a go. Hmm, don't think much of this. This wig for a start, pathetic. And what stupid trousers. No way can this be toy of the week. It's too babyish. But little kids will love him. He's so cute. Actually, I've got more puppets. And a whole puppet theatre out the back. <gasps> we could put on a show. Brilliant. Okay. As long as you do it my way. Right. This way. While the others went to fetch the puppet theatre, I stayed behind to talk to Grandpa. While Mr. Whoops tried to put up the puppet theatre, Grandpa climbed inside a furry pencil case. Oops. Mr. Whoops had another little accident. <laughs> you need a bandage, Mr. Whoops. Thank you. <laughs> oh, let's go and get it was time for Grandpa to put his plan into action. <laughs> Pencil case just back. It did. How did it do that? Look, it's nodding its head. Hey, Mr. Whoops, this is cool. Well, bless my bow tie. I had no idea it was a barking pencil case. Of course, it wasn't a barking pencil case. It was a barking grandpa. <gasps> You've done it, Jason. Now we can do our show. I don't want to do your silly show anymore. I'm playing with this. I'm going to call it Nigel, after my dad. While we played with the puppets, Grandpa played with Floyd. All was going well until Jemima got her strings tangled up. Oh, no. <laughs> what a mess. That's because you wouldn't listen to me, sausage fingers. It growled at me. How does it know what I'm saying? Has it got a computer inside or something? This was a disaster. Any moment, Floyd was going to find Grandpa. But just then, our friends, Izzy, Dora and Shanae arrived. Just what we need. An audience. We're doing a puppet show. Trying to do a puppet show, you mean? This is what happens when you don't do it my way. Oh, While hey. everyone was looking at the puppets, I ran over to Nigel. Phew. That was close. Floyd was making me cross, bossing Jemima about like that. But I know just how we can stop him. Now, this is what we'll do. So, should the puppet theatre be the toy of the week? Yay! Yay! <laughs> Give me the puppet, Jemima. I can untangle the strings for you. Will you? Thanks, Jason. And while we're waiting, everyone else can have fun trying out my new toys. Yay! While nobody was looking, I put the clown puppet and the face paints into the doll's house. I wasn't sure what Grandpa was going to do with them, but it was all part of his plan. Unfortunately, Floyd had a plan too. While Grandpa ran into the doll's house, Floyd decided to play a joke on Mr. Whoops, like this. <laughs> and Mr. Whoops had yet another little accident. While everybody was helping Mr. Whoops, I went to see how Grandpa was getting on. How are you getting on, Grandpa? I'm ready. You can open the door. <laughs> this time, Grandpa had gone too far. He was wearing the clown's wig and costume and had painted his face. Come on, Jason. It's showtime. Everybody sat down to watch our show. I had the animal puppet and Jemima had the clown. Of course, she had no idea that it was actually Grandpa dancing on the end of the strings. The wonderful world of Mr. Whoops. Whoops! <laughs> We're here at his shop. Hooray! We wonder what toy we're going to pick for Mr. Whoops today. Whoops! How's she doing that? We may pick a kite or a kangaroo. Ooh. Or maybe a dog.
です。<笑><笑>ちょっと。So, off we went to Mr. Whoops' shop, and while Jemima was choosing a fairy, Great Aunt Loretta was choosing wrapping paper. And guess who else was there? This is rubbish! Floyd. He goes to my school, and he thinks everything is rubbish. You can't have Christmas without fairies now, can you? It's a magical time! <laughs> oh, you're into this Christmas magic stuff too, Mr. Whoops. Of course I am! <laughs> I'm not, it's rubbish! I didn't really want to be here. I wanted to be in the lighthouse. Believe in any of that magic stuff. Fairies, elves, and as for Santa, flying on a sleigh. <laughs> But at that very moment, in Santa flew. Ho, ho, ho! <laughs> Only it wasn't Santa, of course. It was Grandpa. He can never resist a trip to Mr. Whoops' shop. And luckily, I was there. Now that looks like magic to me. Nonsense. It's one of Mr. Mentor's inventions. He said he'd do something remarkable, and he just has. You'll be wondering where it's gone. <laughs> Jemima was just about to pick up Grandpa. Don't! I, I, I mean, hurry, you, you haven't chosen a fairy yet. Could Grandpa change Floyd's mind? Psst! Magic! Oh, yes! Meanwhile, Alvin couldn't wait to get out of his alien poodle costume. But just then, in came Floyd, Dora, and Shani. Yeah, yeah, very funny. <laughs> Why are you dressed as a poodle? Oh, can you go, yow? Just stop, okay? Stop. It's not funny. It's the funniest thing. Alvin was not going to be taken seriously dressed as a poodle. And just then. And at that moment, this happened. I've got bells on me legs, I've got cymbals on me knees, and I play me little tune by giving this a squeeze. I do it on me own, I don't need a helping hand. No, I do it all alone because I'm a one man band. I can sing, I can play, I can march the day away. Yes, I'm a one man band. Whoa. It sinks. Got attacked by a party of hooks. Grandpa didn't want Mrs. Maradardi to see him. Not yet. Terrible crashing and singing. It was a one man band. The clockwork toy. It was right there. It was right there. It was right there. It was right there. And singing, you're giving me a headache. Go, all of you, go. I'll get you some water. Well, Alvin was. Luckily, Jemima Chalet and Mr. Mentor were so busy looking through his big box of junk that they didn't see Grandpa fly in through the window or land on the floor or jump out, climb onto a table, and hide behind Mr. Mentor's ping a ding a dong just in time, too. Because who should suddenly walk in but. Lloyd! Don't start without me! Lloyd! 
brought a spectacular surprise. I'm so glad you're here. You can help us invent a guessing machine for Jason. Nah, guessing machines are boring. I want to invent a machine that will make you go, ah! <sighs> well, it's already made me go, ah! And you haven't even invented it yet. Grandpa could tell that Floyd was going to be big trouble. We'll work in pairs. You two stay here and me and Mr. Mentor over there. I've got some cardboard and some springs and some odd socks. They were under my bed. Just do what I say, Mr. Mentor, because I've got a brilioso idea. Come on! And Grandpa was going to have to have a brilioso plan. Because soon, Floyd's brilioso idea looked like this. I'm going to call my invention the Odd Sock Shock Monster. Well, we've got the socks. Now it's time to do the shocks. That's the tricky bit. I want his trunk to swing up and go... And his eyes to pop out and go boing. And his tongue to shoot out and go... Ah! Oh, please don't keep doing that, <laughs> Floyd. It's very hard to invent when you keep making me jump. Mr. Mentor was so busy helping Floyd that he had no time to help Jemima and Shane. Meanwhile, Mr. Mentor was making Floyd cross. It's definitely not right there. Goes in this there. is hopeless. It doesn't do anything. It's supposed to make you go, ah! ah! I don't do things that make you go, ah! I'm not that kind of inventor. Oh, dear. While Grandpa thought up another plan, Floyd went over to the others. And what's that supposed to be? It looks pathetic. It's a wizzy, really touchy feely, but it's not finished yet. It'll never work, not in a million years. This is a useless inventing club. Nothing works. Now was Grandpa's chance. He was going to teach Bossy Floyd a lesson. Floyd wanted his odd sock shock monster to make Mr. Mentor go, ah! What if the monster made Floyd go, ah, instead? So Grandpa crawled up the trunk of the odd sock shock monster. Oh, don't do it like that. Do it my way. Get off, Floyd. Leave us alone. You do your own thing. At that moment, Grandpa started to wiggle the odd sock shock monster. And his eyes went boing. And his tongue shot out. And Floyd went, ah! It's horrible. Make it stop. Make it stop. I'm not doing your silly inventing club anymore. So there. Then the odd sock shock monster started to laugh. It's finished. Brilliant. But we don't know if it works yet. Shouldn't we test it out? But there was no time to test it out because... My mum's here. We've got to go. Floyd, do you want to lift home? Let me carry it down the stairs for you. That is so cool. Can I have a look? Nice job. I'm sorry I was so mean, Mr. Mentor. I had no idea you were such an amazing inventor. That odd sock shock monster is spectacular. Apology absolutely accepted. I do hope you'll come back to our inventing club next week. Well, maybe. Aren't you going to take your odd sock shock monster home with you, Floyd? No way! I mean... No thanks. It can stay here. Off we go. Mind the stairs. As soon as everyone had left the room, Grandpa jumped into the plane and flew out of the window. Heave ho! Horatio! Just then, the doorbell rang. That must be Miss Smiley! But it wasn't Miss Smiley. It was... Floyd! Yes, it was Floyd. Heave ho, me hearties! Miss Smiley be waiting for you outside in her car! Floyd, I didn't know you wanted to learn how to be a pirate. I don't. I'm just going along to scare Horatio. <laughs> well, see you later, Grandpa. Don't get up to any mischief while we're out. Oh, I think I'll just have a little lie down. Have a good time. I knew what Grandpa was thinking. If Floyd scares Horatio, then the pirate school will be a disaster. We've got to go and stop them, Jason. And there's only one way I can go to the pirate school, and that is if I'm small. Not a shrinking cap, Grandpa! Catch me if you can! Oh, ho, ho, heave ho! Everyone was so busy cheering Horatio Heave Ho 
that nobody saw Grandpa running into the cafe, or climbing up the table leg, or hiding behind the treasure chest loaf. Welcome, young ruffians, to the Sunny Sand School for Pirates. I'm your teacher, Horatio Heave Ho, and this is my assistant, Stinky. <laughs> Teach them a piratey song. I don't know many piratey songs. I keep forgetting the words. Well, well I know a piratey song. Yeah. How does a proper pirate go? He stamps his foot and he shouts, Eve ho! He hoists the sail of his pirate ship and goes on a treasure hunting trip. He lands on an island far away and digs and digs and digs all day. When he finds gold, how does he go? Yo ho ho! Yo ho ho! Yes, I've got to sing your hearts on me, Hardy. How does the Evil Grandpa was roaring his heart out. But Floyd had other ideas. While we were singing our hearts out, he lands on an island far away. Floyd sneaked off and picked up this a plastic crab. Floyd chased Horatio round and round the food table. Any moment, one of them was going to spot Grandpa. Make him stop, Miss Riley. I'm scared of crabs. I keep thinking they're going to net me somewhere nasty. Floyd? You put that crab back where you found it, please. Oh, it's pathetic. It's only plastic. I think it's time for a piratey picnic. Yeah! Grandpa had to get out of the way. He jumped down and hid under the table. I was pleased to see that Grandpa had escaped. Floyd had taken the mermaid off the cake. It's not very piratey, this food, is it? I mean, why have we got a mermaid cake? Mermaids have nothing to do with pirates. Floyd, put that back. At least you can't scare Horatio with a plastic mermaid. Oh. But Floyd was determined to scare Horatio with something else. While everyone was helping themselves to the pirate picnic, Floyd sneaked off to the dressing up box. He thought nobody was watching him, but he was wrong. What's that boy up to now? Miss Smiley went to get chocolate sundaes, and Horatio said... And while we're waiting for the sundaes, I'll tell you all some pirate stories. Now sit down and gather round. So we all gathered round. Boris Blackbeard. All of us, except Floyd. It was the wildest pirate that ever sailed the seven seas. He had a roar that, that could scare the life out of a giant. Roar! Ah, it's him! It's Boris Blackbeard, the bragging buccaneer! <laughs> of course, everybody else knew it wasn't really Boris Blackbeard, the bragging buccaneer. It was Floyd. Horatio ran off and hid in the store cupboard. Floyd! You're spoiling all the fun and you've upset Horatio. I'm telling Miss Smiley. Yeah, me too. And me. This was a disaster. I was looking around for Grandpa, but I couldn't see him anywhere. And then I saw these. Grandpa had taken his clothes off and was running around pirate school in his pants. He was definitely up to something. I decided to hide so I could see what that something was. Floyd was making for the food when somebody waved at him. This time, Grandpa had gone too far. He was sitting in the fish tank, dressed as a mermaid. Ah! She waved at me! Miss Smiley, you've got to come! There's a real-life mermaid in the fish tank! As soon as Floyd had gone, I ran to the fish tank and whipped the real live mermaid out. Oh, oh, thanks, Jason. Honestly, Grandpa. I didn't think I'd be able to hold my breath for much longer. But it's true, I promise, she's alive. Oh no, Floyd's coming. I'll deal with him, you hide. Floyd went straight to the fish tank, but the mermaid wasn't there. Cooey, I'm over here. Ah! You can talk too? Who are you? 
I'm Melissa the Merry Mermaid, with eyes of turquoise blue, with golden hair and a flappy tail, and a special message for you. No more scaring, Horatio, please. No roaring and stamping your feet. Horatio may not be very brave, but he's ever so, ever so sweet. Horatio! Floyd rushed off to the store cupboard to find Horatio, and I came out of my hiding place. That was so funny, Grandpa. Oh, pass me a napkin, will you, Jason? So I promise from now on I'll be as good as gold. If I do one more thing wrong, you can make me walk the plank. It's a deal. Now please come and see the mermaid, please! While Floyd was saying sorry to Horatio, Grandpa took the mermaid costume off and got back into his normal clothes. I redressed the mermaid doll and put her back on the cake. Just in time, too. Horatio and Floyd were coming back. Not at all like you imagine. She's kind of funny and talks like this. I'm Melissa the Merry Mermaid with eyes of turquoise blue. Well, come on. She's on the cake. This is just a doll. <laughs> Full marks to you, Floyd. He tricked me right and proper, Miss Smiley. He, he, he tricked me. We'll make a pirate out of you yet, lad. Yo ho ho. Yo ho ho. Floyd was a bit confused, but Grandpa's job was done. <laughs> <laughs>